Hi everyone. Sure has been a while, huh? Not really getting a lot coming across my door uh, <clears throat> at the moment, but uh, what I have here is a uh, LCD TV. It's a Philips model 42TA2800. It's a uh, fluorescent uh, backlit model. It's about five years old now. And uh, the owners had it apart to see if he could see anything uh, simple. And uh, he's ripped out the power supply already. So uh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, immediately obvious are these bulging capacitors. He said it was making a buzzing noise. So it's either not starting up or, um, yeah, it's not able to, to um, supply enough current with those caps like that. Or, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, Probably start with replacing those first, but I don't think I've got any in stock. I'll pull them out and test them at least, and just check a few semiconductors around the board, um, get a feel for what's going on. Um, yeah, maybe even scope the outputs and just see how how rough it is. We can measure the voltage um, while it's uh, trying to start up and just see if it's um, floating around something less than it should be, or you know. Simple tests. Now what I just noticed, I had a closer look at the board and uh, these capacitors here are actually just the um, backlight power feed. Uh, the rest of the circuit looks like it's supplied from here. That goes off to the, the motherboard. And uh, yeah, it just looks like they're, they're mainly for the backlight. Um, we've got a, a connector there and another one that runs off to the other side. They go down to these, uh, under, under here, there's the backlight drivers, there's one on each side, so uh, they look fairly industrial, but, uh, but yeah, it, uh, it may still very well be that loading everything down. Um, well, uh, I've got it plugged in, so um, we'll turn it on and see if we get a, a standby light at least. There's the standby light. Aha, uh -huh. the power supply is chirping. See if you can hear this. So what that is, is uh, the power supply is trying to start up and it can't, for some reason, possibly an overload for example, and uh, shutting down and then uh, repeating start up fail shut down start up fail shut down so we need to find out uh, what's holding that back so now what i've done is i've unplugged the um, main board connector so at the moment the only thing connected to the power supply is the backlight circuit i'm going to turn it on again and see if it uh, does the same thing Okay, so I don't hear anything. So now I'm going to test for our standby voltage and see if that's come up. It could be that the motherboard's got an overload uh, a short, short on it that's pulling the whole thing down. Right, she's still turned on. So I'm just going to uh, probe negative on the metalwork. Uh, it's always grounded. And then positive, I'm just going to run up the line and see if we can see anything. So we've got nothing there. Nothing there. 12 volts. Jumping about a little. There's another 12 volts. Nothing. 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 Nothing, nothing, still nothing. <clears throat> and nothing. So, interestingly, uh, most sets seem to have a 5 volt standby line, but this one doesn't have that. It's It's got 12, and uh, that's it. It's got two lines of 12, they probably connect together. Um, yeah, which is quite interesting.
although looking at this capacitor that's a 16 volt cap I don't see any others that would indicate a dual rail supply so yeah there, there may be others that fire up when the rest of it fires up I'd say this, this is going to be our standby and this will be our main transformer and this one over here is probably um, backlight although I don't have it upside down I can't follow the, the traces for sure um, unless it's got maybe power factor correction um, although I think it's usually only seen in plasmas that have quite a, a big load on the on the mains but uh, yeah okay so next thing um, I think we'll check the uh, lines to the motherboard and just see if there's any uh, short on them so now I can't remember which pin it was I'll just find that um, so it was one two three three and four pins three and four and uh, one looks like ground so if I go from one to three and four maybe mm. yeah okay so one's ground and three and four so we'll go to resistance and have a look on the motherboard connector here and uh, we'll go in back there uh, should be able to get a good connection on there one two three one two three what have we got there uh, eight meg and four seven meg well I wouldn't have thought that would be a problem one two three four yeah yeah no. Righto, I just double checked that pin is not ground. So, we'll start again. <laughs> A fifth one along. One, two, three, four, five. And third and fourth. Need longer, longer, longer ends on these leads. Third. Looks like normal input capacitance and fourth looks about the same right okay so what I just uh, did just now this is the backlight connector and this is for the other side of the screen um, when I turned it on and it was making the chirping noise, I checked the voltage on here, it was a steady 12 volts, so I don't believe that this side is loading it up any. Um, I'm now thinking that the uh, backlight side of things is, is what's being uh, loaded up. And when I unplugged both of the backlight drivers, it still made that noise. So, interesting that it's unable to uh, come up to, to full voltage. Uh, whatever that should be, but it was floating around um, nine, eight or nine volts. It couldn't stay steady. Um, obviously, these caps are going to be a place to start, even though they're not measuring a really low resistance, for example. But uh, um, I would think we'll need to check the diodes that feed these uh, these caps off the end of that. The squealing noise is definitely coming out of this one. I just need to check the board and see if if that's what feeds this. I have a feeling it will be. Right, so I've roughly drawn what the circuit looks like that we're looking at, and uh, this is a large yellow transformer in the middle that's making all the noise, um, and the that's the primary side, has the uh, 300 odd volts switched across it, this is our secondary side, um, still not sure what voltage it's uh, supposed to generate at this stage, um, and uh, it's going through uh, a couple of diodes, and then these are our three bulging capacitors all paralleled together um, with of course one side to ground and uh, the positive sides coming through an inductor and then off to the fluorescent uh, tube drivers and uh, these two diodes here are actually in a package much like that mounted to a heatsink um, and the, the diodes come in each leg head to head uh, in, in each end and out the middle 
um, that middle leg is what heads off to the capacitors. Um, I think we'll need to check that, make sure that that's not shorted because uh, that will give this kind of effect and uh, if that's okay we'll need to replace those caps and see if it uh, comes a lot happier. And uh, looking at the board, here's our transformer. Um, this is the diode package that I was referring to and there's our three caps there. As you can see on the underside if you can see the traces there, we've got uh, one set of windings going off to the negative and then the positive, the other set of windings comes uh, through this, this twin diode junction uh, out through the center pin to our capacitive positive and then there's an uh, inductor there which heads off over to the, uh, the output there's the little inductor and that heads over to the output so here's the uh, part we'll check next Right, we have the meter set to diode test, and as I said, there are uh, two diodes going, well, I call it head to head, you know, but because uh, it looks like a couple of arrows head to head, anyway, um, each input is on the uh, outer pins, with the uh, center pin being the output, so if we check across there, yeah, 0.2 of a volt drop, and across there, that's also 0.2, and uh, that looks all right, I think. It'll be a fast switching shock key style, so we're not expecting half a volt drop. So I think that's okay. Let's change those capacitors. Okay, so what I've done now is I've just tacked a couple of caps onto the underside. Um, I don't have the exact values and I don't have them in low ESR, but as long as I don't put uh, load on the end of it, it should be fine. If the caps were causing a problem um, under well, yeah, if they, were, if, they, if they were causing it to not start up, then this should uh, hopefully eliminate that. Um, it's also a nice, easy way not to throw money at something, just to prove that something might work, and then you can go out and buy the, 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 the uh, correct parts. So, let's turn it on. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I don't, I don't think, I mean, if it does, it does, but I've got a funny feeling that it may not fix it. Um, when it was making that noise for, for a, a few seconds, I thought I could smell something getting hot. So there's every chance it could be a primary side fault rather than a secondary side fault. Um, the optocouplers appear to be okay for the, the feedback. So I don't think it's a, quite a control thing from that point of view. But uh, let's turn it on anyway and cross fingers. Now the reason I think it's doing it is when you unplug the main board um, it didn't do it so we thought okay maybe it's the main board but um, um, when the voltage was stable um, what I'm thinking is that the main board uh, well either the TV powers on instead of going to standby as a default method or maybe it um, powers on uh, for a few seconds and then goes into standby when it's happy with things so um, yeah all right let's turn it on No, still making that noise. So that quite possibly could be a, a primary side fault. Let's dig a little deeper. And just to, on this thing getting hot, what I'm going to do is just let it run for a little bit and uh, give it a bit of a sniff test and uh, possibly spray some con contact cleaner in there because it evaporates nice and quick. The part that's hot will evaporate a lot quicker, so that will help pinpoint it without uh, me putting my fingers in there. Okay, so I've roughly drawn up what I've got in the primary side of the circuit that uh, feeds the uh, fluorescent backlights, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's pr most likely going to be a, a primary drive fault given that uh, throwing another couple of caps on there didn't have any effect, and I th sort of thought it wouldn't. Um, and then thinking about that I could smell something getting hot. So I let it run for a bit. Um, I checked, um, so, well, on the circuit here, here's our main um, filter capacitor. This has our um, 395 volts across it. Um, and I checked that because I thought, okay, what if there's a problem that's causing that to drop down to something 
that's not usable by the rest of the circuit. So that's fine. That's sitting at about 395 volts. And I've, uh, I've just sketched up what the rest of the circuit looks like. So here's the primary winding and the FET that switches that. And, uh, and uh, we've got um, 180K resistor there, uh, a couple of diodes there in, in series, um, another diode here, which I think is our, um, our uh, um, freewheeling back EMF clamping diode for when that shuts off. So we don't get any uh, spikes destroying things, and uh, um, and there's a diode that goes uh, back through to ground. So when this switches on, we're going to get uh, the majority of our current from our filter cap. It's going to come through these two diodes, through the winding, and back through this diode. And uh, when it was getting hot, this area was very hot. Um, yeah. So I've made a quick measurement and I've actually found that this diode going back to ground is shorted. Um, and I have yet to check these diodes. But I'm thinking this is where its problem's going to be. Is there's um, perhaps, um, well, I'm not too sure why that's there, but um, perhaps a, a short there is causing an excess of um, current. Um, if these are shorted, even uh, much the same. So. Let's check those and see what comes up. Okay. What way around am I? Here's a filter cap and it runs down through here. We've got our resistor across here, which I'll I'll check that first and just um make sure it's still what it should be at about 180k, because if that's shorted that won't help anything. Um, am I on the right pins? I don't know. I'm upside down. I'm getting 50 ohms there. No, nope. let's try those ones. Still 50 ohms. Huh. Let's uh, ignore that for now. Let's check these diodes. So, uh, as I say, we've got. Um, Here's our uh, source, it goes back through the diode to ground, and if I look at that, it shows shorted. Uh, here is our um, positive from the main cap, it comes through a wire link down through here, and then we've got diode number one. Oh, and that's not looking too favorable. And then we've got diode number two, which is looking just just as unfavorable but then it's in circuit so you know I'm going to take these out and double check them now uh, including that resistor and then I've got this other diode here which is yeah also questionable so yeah next thing is to pull them out of circuit um, probably should have done that first to save time suspecting that might be the case but uh, anyway hop to it So on closer inspection, it turns out that uh, well, this diode is not actually shorted because um, after taking it out and testing it, I also noticed there's a resistor in parallel with it, which is fine. Uh, these two are Zener diodes, and they each uh, clamp at 165 volts as their clamping voltage. So uh, I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to uh, test as a near short circuit. So. I'm thinking that's going to affect things, even though I don't fully understand what's going on here, because um, I would have thought this would do the um, the clamping of any um, high voltage generated off the back EMF of that, um, because these ones come back around to here. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I'm actually starting to wonder what would happen if I turn it on without those there. Now, the switching current for this uh, um, transformer is, um, it's got a couple of paths, it's got through that resistor there, but then when it does switch, it's going to go right through these diodes, uh, which can take a 100 amp pulse each, and uh, through the coil there. Hmm, 
at the moment it's pretty much behaving like a dead short circuit there would be a somewhat of a volt drop across there during uh, forward biasing but um, yeah not too sure that this is the the end of it but um, I don't know if I've got any uh, zeners on me at the moment I'll have a quick rummage maybe I can find something it's probably safer to not power it up with them out of circuit Right, I might be onto something. So the uh, the trend, uh, sorry, the the Zener diodes that came out of this thing, if you want to have a look at the data sheet, were uh, a P6KE120A. Now I've just rummaged through some junk and I found a uh, an old uh, laptop power supply, and uh, it happens to have a couple of Zeners, and they are a BZY. 97C150, which puts it right in the ballpark of the uh, the voltage of the other one at about uh, what have we got there about 156. The others were 165. I think it's going to be enough to at least see if it's uh, going to make a difference to this thing. Um, yeah, and lucky enough there was two of them. So. Moral of the story, don't throw anything out. <laughs> Spare parts are too valuable. <laughs> Junk is too valuable. But uh, anyway, let's not get too excited. We need to put these things in and see if they work. Uh, now, just to prove a point, I'll, uh, I'll drop the thing and lose it under the frame of the TV. No, um, just to prove a point, I'm going to measure the one that I've taken out, and we'll just get a, a reading on it and just see if it's anything uh, like the other ones. Let's reposition that, and uh, just so we know if we're on the on the right page here, because you know maybe maybe for some reason that uh, they measure like a short circuit. But uh, anyway, here we go, and. Uh, Get onto that. Oh look, half a volt forward bias. We'll check the other one before we put it in, make sure that that's happy too. I don't know why the other power supply died. No, so I'm pretty sure the old ones were shorted. Whether or not that's going to fix the thing, I don't know. Um, but uh, we'll pop these in and find out. Okay, it's moment of truth time. We have the new, well, the OK Zeners put in, second hand good Zeners put in. I'm going to switch it on and cross fingers. Hopefully there's nothing particularly else that's wrong with this that caused those to fail in the first place. It could just be old age and heat and stress and whatnot. Um, uh, hopefully the main transformer itself hasn't got a shorted winding or something stupid. Um, yeah, here we go. Hey! It's not making the noise! And... I've got a picture! Ha <laughs> ha! Sweet! Alright, that's a good start. I mean, I can't see if there's anything on the screen at the moment the way it's positioned. Uh, I can see a backlight, but I don't know if there's a menu or, or something further up. It's all under the desk. I don't want to lift it with the camera and everything on it, so uh, we'll screw this back into place and have a closer look at what's going on. I'm going to uh, put the old capacitors back in, and it won't be permanent, but it will allow me to flip the thing over uh, because I don't have low ESR caps, even though these are not really low ESR anymore, but at least it might give me a little bit more capacitance than the two standard. Okay, I'm going to turn it on, see what happens. I can't believe there's no buttons on the front of this. I don't even think there's any soft touch buttons. It's completely remote, other than the on off button. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything, so hopefully there's some kind of on-screen display that will uh, at least uh, prove that things are alive somewhat. Here we go. And it's on. Doing its little self-check and such and things. There's a backlight on. Oh. Ah, 
Oh, that's not too happy. Yeah. Well, we've got an image, but... Backlight's flicking. Now, it didn't do that before, so what I'm thinking is those caps are, even though there's three of them and they're bad, the combined total is even worse than two non-ESR caps that are good. So, yeah, oh well. Uh, I'll throw some other caps in it and uh, we'll review. Okay, we have the new capacitors in. Let's see if it stays on. Ah, it's looking more promising. There's HDMI down there. Wonderful. Yeah, just looking on the uh, top edge there, you can see a couple of uh, white spots along. There's about four white spots along the top edge. Probably don't show up in the camera. I'm sort of thinking. Are they getting bigger? I think they're getting bigger. Is that an artifact of the LCD or the backlight? That's quite odd. Hmm. That's really bizarre, but you can see uh, just just there, there's like a, a hoop, a little loop of uh, white, and it's uh, there's a few of them all the way up that edge. That's quite odd. It doesn't on closer look it doesn't appear to be the LCD itself. Maybe it doesn't like uh, lying on its side. I'll turn it over and see if it goes away. Okay, uh, that's had no effect on it. They're still quite noticeable, and uh, uh, more so on a dark background like there, for example. It's uh, the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Hmm. I'm going to cross fingers and hope that it was like that before, <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's going to be too noticeable on a uh, video image. Um, well, thanks for watching. Maybe uh, you understand the circuit a little better than I do. Um, still not too sure where the clamping diodes are clamping back to, but uh, never mind. Not important, they were faulty. Um, I guess the takeaway from this is trust your nose. You never know um, when something might get hot enough for you to smell and uh, point you right to the location of the problem. Catch you later.